Welcome to another Spotlight video where we guide you through the formation and circulation of cerebrospinal fluid spotlight in your text. After watching this video, you should be able to describe where cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, is produced, how it circulates, and how it is eventually reabsorbed back into the circulatory system. Have you ever wondered what is a spinal tap, a clinical procedure also known as a lumbar puncture? Cerebrospinal fluid bathes, supports, and cushions the brain and spinal cord, while it also transports nutrients, chemical messengers, and wastes. It forms deep within the brain in open spaces called ventricles. To understand this, let's begin by studying this network of chambers. Within each cerebral hemisphere, there is a horn-shaped space called a lateral ventricle. So, there is a left lateral ventricle and a right lateral ventricle. Each lateral ventricle contains a channel called an interventricular foramen that communicates with the third ventricle, a space within the diencephalon. The third ventricle communicates with the fourth ventricle through a slender canal, the cerebral aqueduct. The fourth ventricle occupies a space between the brainstem and cerebellum. Inferiorly, the fourth ventricle narrows and extends down the center of the spinal cord as a space called the central canal. While anatomists describe the ventricles as separate regions, it's better to consider them as an interconnected single network of chambers and canals that are continuous with the central canal of the spinal cord. Cerebrospinal fluid forms from the blood of the circulatory system as fluid squeezes out of tufts of capillaries called choroid plexuses. There is a choroid plexus within each ventricle. The CSF circulates within the ventricles and then down into the central canal of the spinal cord. As it circulates, substances diffuse between the CSF and the interstitial fluid deep inside the central nervous system. Cerebrospinal fluid also circulates within the subarachnoid space. Remember, there are three meningeal layers covering the central nervous system the outermost dura mater, then the arachnoid mater, and finally the pia mater. The cerebrospinal fluid flows into the subarachnoid space through openings in the fourth ventricle, two lateral apertures and a single median aperture. As the CSF circulates within the subarachnoid space, bathing the brain, spinal cord, and cauda equina, it eventually works its way into the superior sagittal sinus via extensions of the arachnoid matter called arachnoid granulations. Once within this sinus, the CSF is now part of the circulatory system's venous return to the right side of the heart. Apply what was discussed earlier to answer the following question. How does cerebrospinal fluid flow from the fourth ventricle into the subarachnoid space? A, through the lateral apertures, B, through the median aperture, C, through both the lateral and median apertures. If you answered C, through both the lateral and median apertures, you are correct. These openings in the fourth ventricle communicate with the subarachnoid space. In summary, CSF is a fluid that bathes and supports the cells of the central nervous system. It is formed within the choroid plexuses, flows through the ventricles of the brain, the central canal of the spinal cord, and the entire subarachnoid space. It is reabsorbed into the circulatory system at the superior sagittal sinus via arachnoid granulations. So what? Why is it important to understand the formation and circulation of cerebrospinal fluid? Well, this information is crucial to understanding a spinal tap, also called a lumbar puncture a test used to diagnose certain health conditions. In this clinical procedure, a needle is inserted between two lumbar vertebrae into the subarachnoid space. The lumbar region is the best place to conduct this procedure considering it is inferior to the spinal cord as well as the location of the cauda equina. This area provides the clinician with enough space for safe removal of a CSF sample to diagnose serious infections such as meningitis, and infection of the meninges. A lumbar puncture can also be used to inject anesthetic medications or chemotherapy drugs into the cerebrospinal fluid. 